Hi ladies, we're going to do a little coding shout out uh, about the first chapter of the ICD-10, um, Parasitic and Infectious Diseases. I'm just going to share my screen and give you some extra information on that. Okay, here we go. It's a little Google presentation. It's about assigning infectious and parasitic disease codes. <laughs> You're going to be using two different kinds of codes in this particular section. It can either be multiple or combination coding. Coding infectious diseases requires both multiple coding and combination coding. In multiple coding, the coder has to use more than one code to capture the condition fully. Some infections have one code for where the infection is and a second for the bacteria that caused it. Combination coding combines the disease and the infectious organism into one code. So combination codes combines everything into one code and multiple coding means that you have to use more than one code. A codes and B codes. Chapter one of the ICD-10 has two series of codes, the A codes and the B codes. Most of the bacterial infections are in the A codes. The B codes contain most of the viral disease and infections caused by other parasitic organisms. Microorganisms like protozoa and helminths are larger parasites like worms and insects. Resistant infections. Since humans have begun using antibiotics to treat the bacteria that cause disease, there has been a gradual increase in the varieties of bacteria that are actually resistant to the antibiotics. This is a predictable result of natural selection. Most bacteria are resistant to some antibiotics, but some are resistant to many. These are called multi-resistant organisms, MROs or superbugs. When reporting an infection that is resistant to antibiotics, use the infection as the first listed code and then Z16 for the infection for, in, for infection with drug resistant microorganisms. Sorry about that guys, I typed for infection twice. <laughs> so if you go to the Z16s in your ICD-10, you're going to see um, infections or parasitic diseases that are resistant to antibiotics. And you will just read through there and find out which one you're looking for. There is one group of disease causing or organisms that does not require a Z code. This is Staphylococcus aureus, which is resistant to methicillin. Specified codes designate the status of the resistance to the drug. The resistant strain is MRSA, probably the best probably the best known superbug. So here's some general information about Staph Staphylococcus aureus, or Staph. It's a type of germ that about 30% of people carry in their noses. Most of the time, Staph does not cause any harm. However, sometimes Staph causes infections. In healthcare settings, these Staph infections can be serious or fatal, including Bactermia or sepsis. Now remember, now we don't use the, the word bactermia, we use sepsis. Sepsis when bacteria spread into the bloodstream. Pneumonia, which most often affects people with underlying lung disease, including those on mechanical ventilators. Endocrinitis, which is an infection of the heart valves, which can lead to heart failure or stroke. Osteomyelitis, which is a bone infection which can be caused by staph bacteria traveling in the bloodstream or put there by direct contact, such as following trauma, puncture wound of foot, or intravenous IV drug use. Staph infections are caused by several different types of staph germs, including MRSA, MSSA, VISA, or VRSA. Now, I want you to notice that this is looks like little websites. You can actually copy and paste that, put it into your search engine, and you can find out um, lots of different um, details about each one of these things. What puts people at risk for serious staph infections? So I'm going to just ask you to pause and read through what 
what this information actually says. It's some great information, but I'm not going to go through it. So pause and read this slide. How to code HIV. This is the second part. Um, now we know that HIV is B20. Hopefully you remember that. HIV is the virus that causes AIDS. The first guideline for coding this virus is you only code confirmed cases, even in the hospital inpatient setting. You don't might, oh, sorry, sorry that again. You do not need to see documentation of a positive seriology and culture to say that the diagnosis is confirmed. Just the physician's diagnostic statement that the patient is HIV positive or has an HIV related illness. So you may not see the, stat, uh, the, um, the lab report, but you may see that the doctor has given you HIV as a diagnosis. That is when you're gonna use HIV as a diagnosis is when the physician tells you to. Please never assume HIV. It goes on a national record. They get added to um, this national record and it follows them and it's almost impossible to get taken off their record. So please, if you ever have the opportunity to code HIV, make sure that the physician has very, very clearly stated that the patient has HIV. Use this code if the patient is known to have been exposed to HIV but has not been tested and has no symptoms, risk codes are. So Z20, one is a, assign, assign the code for asymptomatic HIV infection. Well, let's start at the beginning. You see, I have these cute Zs. I was so excited I found these Zs. So Z7251, uh, high risk heterosexual behavior. Z7252, high risk homosexual behavior. Z72.53, high risk bisexual behavior. Z11.4, assign this code for the encounter for screening of HIV. So if the patient's having um, an HIV test, this is the code that you would use. And Z21, you would as will assign this code for asymptomatic HIV infection. So if you have not labeled this in your ICD-10, please take the time to do so. Even if you've never used your ICD-10, this is a perfect time for you to get in and explore. So let's talk about these ICD-10 codes. R75, assign this code for inconclusive HIV seriology, tested but results inconclusive. If you go to this portion of your ICD-10, this R75, um, I don't have my book or I would pull it out, um, and the back of the R's at the very end, there's all kinds of test results, abnormal or inconclusive test results. B20, assign this code for HIV use. Use this code, I'm sorry, assign this code for HIV and use this code in the first listed place it, if it is a reason for the encounter. So if there is an HIV reason for the encounter that's connected to the HIV, you would just sign this code first. If you go in for a broken foot, but it has nothing to do with HIV, you would use your broken foot. 0908.7, assign this code for HIV disease, complicating pregnancy, childbirth, or periphereum, period after childbirth. So I hope that you learned something that you didn't know, or now you feel more comfortable with the first chapter of your ICD-10. If you haven't gotten in and bubbled and highlighted or made notes, if you don't know what bubble and highlighting is for those of you who have not been through the ICD-10, please disregard my bubble and highlight unless you want to call me and you want to talk to me about it, and I can show you what I do and you can get started. If you guys have any questions, let me know, and thank you for attending Coding Shoutout. Bye, guys.